Hello there guys and welcome back to the FIFA 21 career mode with Real Madrid and today we've got episode 4 of the career mode. Now in today's episode we're going to be facing our next game in the Champions League against Septar Donetsk. So it's going to be an important game and hopefully we can get another 3 points and add to our tally in the group already. So here's a quick look then at the calendar for today's episode. So as you can see we're still in September at the moment. Um, no transfer window and the game's coming up. So I believe the first game is Real Valladolid. Um, away from home and then the following game after that is Osasuna away from home as well And as you can see literally three days later we face Shakhtar Donetsk in the Champions League at home though So that's pretty fortunate for us, but it's gonna be important to choose the B team We well, call them the B team or the future 11 that we decided last episode in the team sheet in that game So then hopefully majority of the first team players are ready um, for the game in the Champions League Then I think we're gonna end the episode off with a game against Real Betis and then you can see in episode 5, we've got some amazing games coming up. We've got Atletico Madrid, Inter Milan, Barcelona. So that'll be episode 5. But I think for episode 4, we're going to go with these four games. And I think the first game at Real Valladolid, I think we'll visual sim this one. Uh, well, visual sim, quick sim. It is actually called the FIFA 21. We'll quick sim it, see how it goes, see if we need to jump in. So then as you can see, we've got an email here from Spain, International Management Offer. And I remember saying in episode 1 to you guys, it should I take the job offer if it does come. I didn't expect it to come so soon, so when it's 4 episodes in, we're in September, and we've already been offered the Spain job. Should I take it, should I not? Uh, you can see the expectations there, reach the final and win the cup. We've got until the 20th of November to accept it, so I don't need to accept it in today's episode, but I'll leave it with you guys to let me know down below in the comment section, should we go ahead and accept this offer, try and win the World Cup with Spain? Um, should we reject it and then carry on and focus on Real Madrid? Let me know down below in the comments. So as you guys know, every episode, we always read out some of your comments, put them on screen, read them out in the video, give you guys credit for the comments, and it could be changes that are made into this career mode. So I'm going to start this one off with a comment from BNY, saying play Jovic instead of Benzema because he deserves to play, and players this year can get like 5+. plus. Um, on that overall easily and as much as I agree with this comment like I say I was going to play Jovic or Jovic however you want to pronounce it I um, was going to play him but we're signing Mbappe as you can see from the future 11 and our main starting 11 as you could call it um, our strongest starting 11 obviously Mbappe is higher rated than Benzema so on and so forth anyway um, this is how our starting 11 is looking and we go to the future 11 if I was to play Jovic I'd literally be dropping an overall and don't get me wrong I'd love him to go up to an 85 but with having Mbappe in the team one of them would always have to be on the bench or reserves so I just feel like it's best to load him out for a year see um, how Benzema goes and sort of his overall if he drops too much I might even recall um, Jovic from whatever team he decides to join and then start playing him. And also guys, if you're enjoying this episode so far, don't forget, leave a like down below on the video. I do appreciate all the support you guys can give me. And also if you are new and you want to see more videos from this career mode or just from myself in general, don't forget, hit the subscribe button down below and also the little bell next to it to be notified of when I upload. So then the next comment coming up is from Kenneth. Once again, this guy gives me so much great advice um, for this career mode. I do appreciate it. Um, but here we go into the comments. So good signings for Camavinga. He's a kind of like a deep line playmaker reminds me of Xabi Alonso And in the game that I have used him I think it was the previous game against oh, I can't remember who but it was in the previous episode We used him and when he came on it was great to be fair getting forward as well And um, I did need to check his work rate which I haven't checked as of yet But again, I agree great signing and um, I would prefer Mbappe as a right winger instruction to cut inverted winger Just like CR7 of course as you like and I agree with that um, I'll quickly take the comment off screen, be able to see Mbappe is on the right wing for us in our stronger starting 11 and I'll apply that instruction to him because I do believe him getting inside the box and getting more centred for a shot on goal is obviously better for him with his shooting stats and what have you. Um, I know that it would be great if we signed Owa and Donnarumma but, but priority is Haaland as Benzema will decline soon and again this links back to the first comment um, about Jovic, if we do sign Haaland what happens to Jovic then? Do I sell him? Because then literally there'll be like four strikers at the club. They're not all going to get game time. And Jovic would just sort of be wasting away on the bench. So I don't know what to do in that sort of situation. Uh, Emerson, development plan will be attacking at wide back. And I'll go ahead and apply that to him um, just after I read this out. And in the following season, if we have money, uh, Shirky, Cam, who's already on our shortlist at the moment. And Bellingham, who I completely forgot about, moved to Dortmund. Centre mid would be great for the future. Also great to... Oh no, sorry. Also, to see if Kubo can be trained as an inverted winger to train the finish. And also, Kubo is out on loan at the moment. Um, I was going to recall him, but I don't feel like there's any need to recall him. So, I'll keep him out on loan. And hopefully, next season, when he comes back, we'll sort out his development plan and get him ready for the first team. 
So I've just quickly gone ahead and added some instructions to two of our players. Hazard, I got him on free roam and get him, well, get him behind was already there to be fair. So I just put him on free roam for now. And um, we obviously put him at the number 10 kit number. So I want him to sort of become the playmaker on that left hand side. I'm sure Kenneth left that comment in the last episode as well. Uh, obviously, I still want him to try and get in, score goals as well, don't get me wrong, but I feel like he could be a good playmaker on that left-hand side. Mbappe, I've got him on cutting side and getting behind. Benzema, um, he's just pretty much, I think that's just the default instructions at the moment. Not too sure what to put him on. Um, Casemiro, this is what it was already on, cut passing lanes. And Tony Kroos, stay back while attacking, stay on the edge of the box. Um, Modric, he's on um, just default pretty much. Carver Howell's on join the attack. Mendy, join the attack as well. And it's, oh, Ramos joined the attack and Varane stay back while attacking. So here we go then, Emerson. Let's take a look at his development plan and change him to, what was it, attacking at wide back. And let's have a look at what stats that will increase. So it'll increase his sprint speed, acceleration, vision crossing, short pass, curve, ball control, slide tackle and stamina as well. So you can see his work rate there, high, medium. And I'm pretty happy with that, to be fair. His sprint speed will increase, crossing will increase. Also his short passing as well, which is nice ball control as well so I'm happy to go and apply that to him and it was Kamavinga whose work rate I just wanted to quickly check and it won't show me on that screen so we go to development plan you can see sharpness there 12 I really need to increase that and his work rate is high high so fair enough and his stamina is 79 and playmaker will increase that stamina which is great no problems with that at all obviously if he's on high high he's going to be doing a lot of um you know a lot of work so obviously increasing stamina will not make that as bad so before we go into our first game of the episode then, let's take a look at the league table. You can see Atletico Madrid, a game in hand, but they are on 13 points. Villarreal in second, Barcelona in third, us in fourth on 12 points. Osasuna in fifth, but obviously a game in hand as well. And we'll quickly check the bottom three while we are here. And that is Granada, Elch and Cadiz. So here's how the two teams are going to line up for the first game. Then you can see we're going with our strongest starting 11, just because we think back to the calendar. Uh, we've got this game, then quite a bit of a break, to be fair. And then we face, is it Osasuna? Who actually, um, that they're, they're, they've just gone into fifth place, haven't they? So I'm just thinking now. Obviously, I want our strongest uh, starting 11 ready for the game against, um, what was it, Shakhtar Donetsk. And obviously, the Osasuna game was actually two or three days before the Shakhtar Donetsk game. So I need the strongest starting 11 rested. So I'm going to play him. The only time I can sort of play them is now. So we're going to quick sim this. Should get the win. I don't see why not. But I'm going to quick sim it just in case. Because we've seen how the preseason tournament went. And we got the 2-1 win in that game. 57% possession. And I'm going to be honest. I thought quick sim. Oh, okay. Quick sim. It makes sense now. Quick sim. And I thought that was the other sim. But it doesn't matter. We got the win anyway. And um, we got the 2-1 win. Who scored? Tony Kroos. And Hazard scored in 22nd minute. So that's not bad at all. And... Like I said, I thought that was going to be the visual sim. I don't know why, uh, but either way, we got the win in that game and uh, we got the three points. So in the table now, um, I can't believe I just made made that mistake, but it doesn't matter. In the league table, and that puts us into second place. Villarreal in first place with 12 goals, goal difference on 15 points. We're level with them. No losses in the league as of yet. Atletico Madrid in third. Barcelona in fourth now having a draw um, in that last game. So we're going to attend the press conference before the game against Osasuna and we're going to use our future 11 in this game. A little bit worried for the goalkeeper, Lunin, 75 rated, but we should be okay. And um, if you guys didn't watch last episode, we're actually on ultimate difficulty now as well. Um, so can you keep winning? I'm going to say we're in really good form at the moment and I hope we can obviously keep winning because we need to win that La Liga title this year. Barcelona already dropping points with a draw in the previous game. Um, but uh, but yeah, have you got any worries about the game? Um, to be honest, I don't. I'm just going to say we'll keep playing our football. And at the moment, playing our football has worked. So I don't see why it shouldn't in this game. And with a final question, the team's been absolutely flying lately. How confident are you that the players can continue um, this level of performance? I'm going to say I think there's more to come. Definitely in terms of scoring more goals. Because I think last game, Brussia, uh, um, uh, Gladbach, sorry, we scored only one goal. I wish we scored more. So here's how the two teams are going to line up then for this game. We are away from home, so I'm a little bit worried with the team and how it's going to go. But I'm still hoping with the quality on pitch, we've still got Mbappe in the team, fair in mind. Now, there's me worried about, you know, the game. We've got Mbappe up front, we've got Vinicius Jr. on the left, Rodrigo on the right. So the front three are great. Same with him in the field, to be fair. Kamavinga is the only one that sort of lets it down just because of the minus one, just because of his sharpness at the moment. I really do need to try and increase that a little bit faster. Uh, Mendy at left back, Emerson at right back who I haven't used as of yet so it'd be nice to use him. Militao, Upamecano in centre back and Lunin in net. 
Oh, here we go. Vinicius Jr. is through. I'm going to try to take it inside. Go for the finesse. Round the goalkeeper. And as if it's gone wide. I really thought that was going in. Done great there, Vinicius Jr. And I'm just thinking um, Mbappe is literally going to play every game in this episode. And I probably should have maybe subbed him out for Jovic and played him in this game. And I'm pretty sure Jovic is on the bench. So at half time, I'll probably take Mbappe off. The bit down the scoreline is going. Uh, obviously, but uh, I was just thinking that then, like Mbappe is going to play a lot of games. Not putting it past him that he can't do it, but uh, I'm just thinking for fitness levels and what have you. But here we go, Emerson finds the pass to Mbappe, and he's in space. He's, oh, just that touch, a little bit too strong, and the keeper's got to it. Oh, here we go, Osasuna through. Ruben Garcia with the shot, and wow, off the bar, and we really have just been saved there because Lunin, I don't think he was going to make that save. Rodrigo looking for the low cross, Mbappe, he's going to get there and Mbappe makes it 1-0 in this game, 25 minutes in and that counter-attack just from that shot they hit on the bar, uh, like I said I don't think Lunin were going to get to that at all but Mbappe has found the back of the net with that one, the low cross um, across the box, I'm pretty sure from, was it Rodrigo, I'm pretty sure Rodrigo there using his pace, got so much pace on these front three players then, Mbappe just waiting at the back post, almost overran it. Um, but it didn't matter. Now four goals in the La Liga. Open Meccano's lost it. And they're going to play the ball through Lunin. Okay, he's done well there to come out. He's going out for a corner. But Open Meccano doing great, to be fair. But just apart from losing it there. Literally, you've seen the worst bit of this uh, performance so far. Couldn't get that one away. And who's going to make the run out for this one? Odegaard can't get to it. Mbappe, okay. Osasuna almost through. Vinicius Jr. getting to that one. I just want to get this ball cleared, really. Um... Try and, okay, a little bit risky, the passes here, a little bit risky. Um, but so uh, we managed to get it out of our area. Our Osasuna plays some great football and Lunin is tested again. And he saves and he goes out for another corner here just before half time. And Lunin is doing great so far, I've got to say. Great save. Osasuna just finding a way through the whole team so easily. And here we go, the cross. And finds out wide. Okay, what are we going to get from this? Vinicius Junior doing well at the back here on these crosses. To try and recover the ball. Ruben Garcia, can we close him down? Vinicius Junior. Um, okay, never mind. Um, yeah, I think this is one thing I hate about our competitive mode is how they start doing skills and that. And you know what I mean? Like, it's great for me because they just work it out of the dangerous area. But, you know, it is what it is. But we're going to have time here. 1 0 up. Thanks to Mbappe. Over the top to Mbappe on the volley. And oh my days, what a play that was just after half time, making it 2 0. In this game, this guy is literally the best player. Um, <laughs> this guy is just a star man. He's so worth the money in career mode. He is so worth the money. Look at the run he makes. I'm sure that was Valverde with the assist. And here's a replay of the goal. And oh my god. So in FIFA 21 this year, I only learned this out I think yesterday. Once you play the pass, if you flick the right analog stick... Uh, the player that just passed the ball will make that run. So Mbappe's passed it to Valverde. I flicked the stick right. Uh, Mbappe's made the run. I've ran with Valverde, chipped it over the top. And then obviously Mbappe, right place, right time, volleys it in. And uh, I'll quickly show you guys what it is because it was new to me. And I can imagine it might be new to you guys. Um, obviously, if you guys already know about this. So you can see here, Mbappe receives the ball. He plays the pass to Valverde. We'll hide that. He plays the pass to Valverde, right? Now, I flick the stick right towards the, obviously, the opposition's goal. So now I've done that, look at Mbappe making the run, making the run, making the run. I'm running with Odegaard, sorry, not Valverde. I'm pretty sure that's Odegaard. Um, making the run, and I can see, go for the over-the-top ball. Over-the-top ball comes in, and then Mbappe, right place, right time, fires it in, into the back of the net. But yeah, honestly, it's so amazing, that feature. Instead of having to press L1 or LB all the time to get the players to make the run, if you just do that, it's so much better. Oh, here we go. Osasuna. Are we going to be able to do anything about it? And Lunin, again, great save. Gone out for another corner in this game. And Lunin, to be fair, is giving Courtois a good run for his money here. Another great save. Um, but here we go, the corner. Got to defend this now. Can't ruin this 2-0 lead. Cross comes in. And the header. And Lunin, wow. Okay, tested once again. Rodrigo over the top to Mbappe, pretty sure he's on side, take your time Mbappe, get that in, and there we go, 3-0 now in this game, Mbappe with the hat-trick, and just you just can't believe it, can you, 64 minutes in, Mbappe makes it 3-0, 
makes it 3-0. These front three players are just amazing. The amount of pace on Rodrigo gets it, chips it over the top, Mbappe, loads of time, loads of space, and just fires it past the goalkeeper now and makes it 3-0 in this game. That's now six goals in the La Liga for him. And to be fair, now he's got his hat trick. We're going to see if I've got Jovic on the bench, and I'm pretty sure I do. It might be Benzema, and it is Benzema. So I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. I thought I had Jovic on the bench, but I don't. Um, so just leave Mbappe on for now. Go a couple of minutes left in this game. Get the low cross. And we can. Camavinga was there. He was there waiting to get his first goal for the club. But there we go. We get the 3-0 win against Osasuna. Mbappe with the hat-trick gets the match ball. And what a game it was from this man. So we're going into the post-match interview here. The first question being about Mbappe. Great win and congratulations. No question. All the headlines. Did Mbappe's hat-trick surprise you? And no, it did not surprise me. And Mbappe can lead this team to great things. And guys, if you can afford him in your career mode, even if you just do the financial takeover just to sign him or use PSG, just use him and you'll see how good he really is. Like, honestly, obviously no surprise for being 90 rated, but Christ, how good is he? Um, another win, how long will this run go on for? And all credit to the players, to be fair. They even you can call them the B team, what, what, whatever you like, but they did great today. Even though it's also sooner, Again, they are fifth in the league, as we've seen before. So it's not the worst team in the league. They did great today. And Lunin as well. I've got to say Mbappe, man of the match. But Lunin, he would be my second closest to man of the match. And an emphatic win, of course. What can you take away from it? And you can only beat what's in front of you. And that's true. And now, now we stay unbeaten as well. So we've got an offer here from Juventus. Wanting to take Jovic um, with a loan option to buy. Now, whenever I've seen these before, it won't let me accept them whatsoever. Now, I don't know why that is, but I can only ever negotiate it. But I definitely don't want to loan him out to Juventus. You can see there, he's got a release clause of 70 million euros. And if I was going to, you know, loan him out, I want to loan him out to a team like, um, let's say, Leicester or Everton or, you know, along them lines. I don't want to loan him out to a team that's in the Champions League um, like them three teams are then. Because if he faces against us, you know, you've got to guarantee that he would more than likely score against us. So after that game, then let's take a look at the league table and how it's standing. And we are in first place at the moment. The only team to have won all six games in the La Liga so far. Villarreal in second, Barcelona third, Atletico Madrid in fourth place. And also sooner have now dropped down into eighth place after that game. And now I believe at the end of the episode we face Real Batiste and they're in ninth place at the moment on eight points. So hopefully... If we can end the episode on a win, that'd be great. Move us up to 21 points. But first, we face um, Shakhtar Donetsk in the Champions League. And it's how the group table is looking so far in Group B. Inter Milan on three points and we're on three points as well. Obviously, a win against Shakhtar will take us up to six. So here we go then. Here's how the two teams that line up going into this game against Shakhtar Donetsk. And you can see we've got our strongest starting 11 out. Um, I don't see why not. Mbappe as well has recovered quite well. Benzema's gone up by an overall to 89. So... Um, Hazard's gone down to an 87, so I don't know if it fluctuates depending on morale, uh, sharpness and all that sort of stuff. Will his overall you know, fluctuate on that? Um, I don't know, let me know down below. I just thought the numbers at the side changed, the plus 5, minus 1, so on and so forth. I didn't know the actual overall changed, um, but let me know down below. But again, um, Shakhtar Donetsk, we're not going to underestimate them. I don't know too much about their team, but, uh, but yeah, let's not underestimate them. Let's try and get another 3 points. Into this game then, looking forward to see how the instructions play out for Hazard and Mbappe that we set at the start of the episode. Like I say, Mbappe, I don't think I'll sub him off, depending on how fitness levels go. Um, but obviously, if we can make it through the whole game, that'll be great. There we go, Mbappe, look at that low crossover to Hazard. Maybe not, okay. I think he was trying to play it there to Tony Kroos, who I did not want to play it to. But either way, Hazard already sort of getting in and around. And Hazard once again, okay, just couldn't get it over the top. But Hazard already... Um, getting that free roam instruction and working it really well. Casey Miller wins that one back to Hazard. Play that ball through. Okay, not the ball we really wanted, but Modric has still got it. Tries to play the pass over the top. Benzema with, oh, with the header. Could have done with the volley there. Oh, here we go. Shakhtar Donetsk through. Couture, and he couldn't save that one. It goes under him. And 25 minutes in, Shakhtar Donetsk take the lead in this game. Really poor defending. From me, really need to work it out in the defending area because um, it's not the first time I've said that in this career mode. Still sort of trying to get used to it, but uh, just bringing defenders out of position too many times. You can see, look at all that space there. Crucial, crucial space. And they've used it and they've got themselves a goal. And how many minutes in now? I think we're only 25 minutes in, but uh, don't want to go into half time or 1-0 down. 
Benzema's getting through. Players catching up to him. Can he play the pass back? And he can. Oh, I just couldn't get the shots away. And I really wanted that pass going to Hazard. But I think he changed position by the time I went to play the pass. But here we go. We're going to throw in Mbappe. Throws that out. Modric. And no one really to really pass to here. Casemiro. Get it back to Modric. And I want him to play a ball through. Okay, maybe get it through there to Benzema. To get it to Hazard. And Hazard is through. And it's wide. Can you believe it? That was so close to going in. And Hazard really has to be putting that away. I've got to be honest. How that went wide, I'll never know. So there we go then. Into half time in this game. It's still 1-0 down. Not great. I can't believe Hazard didn't put that goal. Well, that shot, sorry, in the back of the net. Picking off half time. I've already made a change in this game. Benzema's come off. Rodrigo's come on. And obviously I've swapped the right wing over. Benz uh, Mbappe, sorry, now playing up front. Um, just because only 45 minutes left in this game now, we crucially need two goals because I do want all three points because we play into Milan next and I can't hope for anything in that game. Um, so yeah, hopefully Mbappe up front. Got a hat-trick in his last game. Hopefully he can get something similar in this game. Go oh, Mbappe's got it, trying to work his way around. Can he get a shot away? And he can. The loose ball, he's got to go in the back of the net and it does. Hazard levels it in this game. He makes up for the mistake. Well, not the mistake earlier, but for not getting it in earlier 69 minutes in we level it up in this game i really thought the goal wasn't coming tempted to go ultra attacking and i still might just put it maybe not ultra attacking but to attacking you can see mbappe here does well trying to get around the defender shot comes off the goalkeeper and hazard there gets the rebound and gets into the back of the net and makes it 1-1 in this game Romero to modric and he fires that one in and wow okay i'm surprised the goalkeeper didn't put a stop to that one 76 minutes in and it looks like we're going to rescue all three points in this game. And to be fair, um, I, I, my worry is you guys think that I'm playing on Legendary or something. I'm going to go quickly go over and see if I can prove to you guys that I'm playing on um, Ultimate Difficulty here. Um, game settings. Just because that goal looks so easy. Um, game settings. Is it going to show? It's not even going to show, is it? It's not going to show at all. But uh, I'm not using any sliders or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it just, just looks so easy of a goal to, to score. Like, look at this. Get the pass there to Modric. And he fires that one in. Brilliant. To be fair though, bottom left hand corner. Not the easiest save for the goalkeeper. But still, we make it 2-1 in this game. Hopefully now we can sort of hold out and get the three points. So we've got a corner here as well. Just making a change. Valverde is going to come on for Modric. It's getting quite tired now. Um, this far into the game. Can we make it 3-1 with the corner? Let's have a see. Hazard with the cross. Great cross inside the header. Goalkeeper's had to parry it out. We've got ourselves another corner. Um, substitution, Vinicius Jr. for Mbappe. Um, you know what? I'll do that change just because Mbappe has played every game, like I say. So I don't see why not. And it gives Vinicius Jr. some game time, doesn't it? So it'd be great to see him on the pitch. Only five minutes plus added time to go. Another corner here, though. Can Hazard deliver another great cross? And the cross comes in with the header, but it looks like we're not going to get anything from it. Vinicius Jr., bit of skill. Okay. Gets the pass off to Hazard. Back to Vinicius Jr. Go for the finesse shot. Vinicius Jr., okay. Referee might as well just blow it at this point. Um, it's good. We are going to get the corner, okay. Hazard, another cross inside. Maybe get the header this time. Okay, Sergio Ramos. And it's headed towards goal. And almost a chance there to make it 3-1. Another corner in this game. How many are we going to get? Hazard once again and the header. But this time goes wide. The referee blows the full time. And Real Madrid 2, it's Shakhtar Donetsk 1. And we get all three points in this game. So we've got a few mails here then to answer the youth squad monthly report. Let's have a quick look at this. And wow, okay, these two players don't look too bad at all, do they? Luke Collins, 51 overall at the moment. Potential 72 to 92. He's age 16, 6 foot 5 goalkeeper, right footed, a four star weak foot as well. Doesn't look bad at all. We'll keep him in here just for now. The 51 overall and being 16 puts me off a little bit. Um, but that's where we move down here and have a look at Alexander Young. A right wing at centre mid, age 15 and uh, 63 overall. 74 to 94. And again, I think we're just going to have to sign this guy up, aren't we? Oh no, we can't sign him because he's age 15. But uh, we're going to have to keep him in there and hope that um, as soon as he turns 16, his development continues and we sign him into the first team. So the only youth player that we actually have signed so far, Alexander Campbell, has agreed to a two-year loan move and the team Oceanico, Oceano um, FC, uh, the player will join there for two years. Like I say, I just wanted to get him out on loan. We've got uh, Courtois, we've got Lund in as well, so we weren't going to get any game time, so loan made sense. A monthly scouting report, let's take a look at this. 
Anyone, we really need to cut this down. There's too many players in here um, at all. But I'm guessing the top ones are the most recent ones. I'm guessing that makes sense. 69 to 85, 62 to 76. No one really stands out at all. Okay, George Phillips there, 70 to 88, age 15. Doesn't look too bad. Um, I can sign him, but obviously I can't promote him to the first team. Um, Peter Bailey doesn't look too bad either. Age 17, 67 to 91. Uh, we'll sign him as well. Uh, I don't see why not. There's no harm in signing them, is there? Okay, Jake Tremblay. Tremblay, age 17, potential 76 to 94. Five foot seven. I'm guessing some sort of right mid, left midfielder. We'll sign him as well. And is that the end of the list? I think that was the end of the list. So that was the end of the list. I'm going to reject the rest of the Ds now because I don't think they're going to, you know, the potential is going to improve anymore. But that was a decent bunch of players we just signed up. So here's how our Champions League group then is looking after that game against Shakhtar Donetsk. We're now on six points into Milan on four. Um, Mushu Gladbach on one and Shakhtar Donetsk on zero. So I'm going to quickly run through the other groups. If you guys want to take a look at these other groups, feel free to pause the video, have it, you know, a deeper look inside. But a quick um, look down these groups as it is. And that is all the groups. Quick look at that. Juventus there on six. Barcelona only on three. One, one, lost one. But uh, we're going to go into our final game now. Now, I was going to play this game against Real Betis, but we're being at home, and uh, the video is getting quite on a little bit now. I'm, you know, the, the, I think the first three videos have been 30-plus minutes long, so I'm trying to shorten them down a little bit. We're going to simulate this game, but I'm definitely going to um, visual sim it um, so you guys can see the game in full. Tempted to go with our B team, so to call it, um, just because I want to try and give them more game time. And Real Betis, where are they in the league at the moment? Let's take a quick look. Um, I think they were ninth last time we looked, wasn't there? I think they were ninth. Yeah, ninth place at the moment. So I'm going to keep Mbappe in the team. But one change I am going to make before we go in is put Jovic on the bench instead of Benzema. Um, just because if he, um, if, we, if we get a chance, I'll give him some game time. I don't see why not. He is um, lacking in sharpness at the moment. Zero sharpness. So I need to try and keep him on the bench here. Because I'm pretty sure in the training... The bench players are included as well. I'm pretty sure. Am I correct in the thinking that? You know when you get the training here and you can sim it. I'm pretty sure the bench players are included in that. Well, I hope so. Um, so then hopefully I can build up Jovic's, um, what you call it, um, his sharpness. But let's um, sim this match. Now, I'm pretty sure sim means the visual sim, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure it does. Am I right? Yeah, it does. So I'm glad I picked the right one this time. We've got a strong lineup, to be fair. Even though it's classed as our B team, so to speak, we've still got a strong lineup. That's why I'm not really too uh, worried in playing this side, especially Mbappe up front. But Mbappe's played a lot of games, so that's why I want to sort of try and sub him off at some point if we do manage to get a good score um, up to half time. But let's see how we're going. We'll, we'll keep it on player ratings for now and, see, and keep an eye on who's performing well and who isn't. But here we go, left wing already. Um, are we going to get anything from this? Um, play the pass into the centre. Okay, trying to get it to Mbappe, maybe, maybe not. Okay, they lose the ball, but five minutes in, already getting into the final third. There we go, chance to make it 1-0, and we make it 1-0 in the game. Rodrigo with the goal, and already 13 minutes in, we're 1-0 up in this game. And um, I didn't know Yves Royal. Um, apologies for not knowing who that player is, but I don't remember him being in the team. Yves Royal, he's not even on the, he's not even in the starting 11. What the hell? Is that just a glitch with the free trial? Because if we have a look down the left now, we're able to see number 24, E Royale. Um, supposedly playing right back, but that's Emerson. Oh, Emerson. Is his last name Royale? Maybe. Maybe, yeah. And I have not clocked on. And it's saying e Emerson Royale. Maybe, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe it's not a glitch. Maybe that actually is um, his name. But again, 1-0 up. 22 minutes into the game. Real Batiste here looking decently well going forward. But we won it back. Mbappe. Finding it out wide. Can we get a cross in here maybe or a pass across? Okay, we lose it, but it's going to go out for a corner. And the corner comes, plays short. Sorry, Mbappe. Is he going to try the shot? And he isn't. He loses it. Back post. Are we going to get the shot away? Okay, someone. Um, played a, played, okay, no one fancied the shot um, at this point. But uh, already 1-0 up. Our real Batiste level it up. 1-1. 40 minutes in. And the score a goal here, Lunin in goal. I'm, I don't think I have Courtois on the bench, you know. And it's, it's just that he's having a 5.7, you know, player rating in this game. So I might just have to make the change because obviously we need three points in this. We want to keep the unbeaten streak going. But maybe we can outscore them. Mbappe trying to get the ball back there, I think. Poor shot there. But we're going to half time here. Level at the break there. Rodrigo scoring the goal for us. Only one shot so far. Uh, so far, 57% possession. 
Um, let's have a look at the team management. Do we have Courtois on the bench? Just because we do, actually. I'm going to make that change just because I definitely want to try and keep, um, you know, us unbeaten. And Mbappe worried me a little bit with his fitness. Not going to lie. Going to keep keep him on just for now. Might make a change later on. Real Batiste attacking once again. We need to do a lot better defensively. And, oh, here we go. On the counter-attack. Play the ball down. And can we get across inside, maybe? And we can. Play the ball across. And the shot's blocked. But they have made two changes so far. Camavinga's going to come off. He's not in a bad game. Maybe should have brought Valverde off. Uh, but Tony Kroos is going to come on. And also Brunk Hazard on for Vinicius Junior. You can see... His rate at the moment is only 6.6. .6. Oh, there we go. We level it up in this game at Mendy. And that was a great goal, to be fair. Making it 2-1 in this game now. And to be fair, I was so tempted to jump in. Literally so tempted. I was gonna, I think I'm going to drop this back down to defensive now. Try and defend this league. The subs have come on as well. Like I said, I was almost going to jump in there. And I'm thinking 10 minutes left. Is that enough? Real Batiste on the attack here now. Got to defend this properly. Only 5 minutes plus added time. Real Batiste, wow, okay, my heart dropped there with them being almost through. The right side, the right side, so much space there on the right-hand side. No one making the run and uh, no one making the pass, sorry, to the right-hand side. And again, Real Batiste on the break here, great defending. Literally one minute added on and the referee blows the whistle and we get the win in our final game of the episode. The unbeaten run continues, Mendy getting a goal and Rodrigo getting a goal to secure the three points. So here we are then, here's how the La Liga table is looking at the end of today's episode. We're on seven games played, at seven wins, a clean run of games so far. 21 points, uh, Atletico Madrid in second on 19, Barcelona in fourth place at the moment, only on 16 points, five wins and a draw. Obviously they've only dropped two points to be fair, obviously we have got the game in hand, thinking about it. It looked a lot worse than I was thinking then, but obviously we are a game in hand. Uh, we'll have a look down at the full table and see who are in the bottom three. Uh, I'm dreading next episode, guys. I'm dreading Valencia in 18th, Elch in 19th, and Cadiz in 20th place. So here's a quick sneak peek then at next episode. And you can see we've got a tough episode coming up. We've got Atletico Madrid away from home, and then Inter Milan away from home, and then Barcelona away from home as well. So that's going to be a really tough episode, that one. I'm looking forward to it as of ever play the El Clasico, to play the derby, well obviously the derby against Atletico Madrid and also try and top the group with all nine points in three games against Inter Milan. But there we have it then guys, that has been today's episode, hope you enjoyed it, I do appreciate all your guys' support on these videos as of late, like I say it's just blown me away, I do appreciate every like on the video, every subscribe button that the person clicks, like I say I do appreciate it and um, I can't wait to keep producing more FIFA 21 content, as soon as the trial's over and the full game comes out, There'll be more videos on career mode experiments, all that sort of stuff. So be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.